Hey guys, Chef Tom here. Today we're gonna to talk about recipe costing, and I also have some tips and tricks to make it easier. Finding recipe costs are important for budgeting purposes, to help you with your food cost. Uh, it helps with establishing a selling price. Knowing how much your recipe costs and your food costs and all that's gonna help you stay in business. It doesn't matter how good your food is, if you're losing money, then you're not gonna stay open for very long. When you're costing out recipes, you're gonna to wanna to break down the items into the smallest unit possible. For instance, if you buy a case of potatoes, you're not gonna use that whole case of potatoes for the recipe. Most potatoes come in cases of 50 pounds. So you would break it down into pounds and then pounds into ounces. Depends on the unit of measure in the recipe. The recipe calls for ounces, you broke down pounds into ounces. It's great for comparative shopping uh, if you break it down to the smallest unit because then you can kind of compare, like say you have a 50 pound case that's $30 and then you have a 40 pound case that's $25. If you break it down into the smaller unit, then you can compare apples to apples. Well, this one is 10 cents per pound and this one's nine cents per pound. Now that the price per unit has been established, you can uh, break that over to your recipe and figure out the cost per ingredient per recipe. Cost per unit equals as purchase cost divided by number of units. When doing these recipe costing, there's gonna be a lot of math involved. Uh, I know a lot of chefs didn't really get into cooking to do a lot of math. Uh, we're kind of a bunch of degenerates. We didn't sign up to do an engineering degree. So I'll show you the correct way to cost out a recipe and then I'll go over some tips on how to make that a little easier. Uh, Cause after doing a bunch of math and trying to wrap your head around a lot of these numbers, uh, your brain can become mush. Sometimes you need to step back, take a break, uh, double check your numbers to make sure that they make sense. Uh, sometimes if you're just typing in a bunch of numbers and punch, you're just hacking away at a bunch of numbers, uh, you kind of lose a uh, sense of the bigger picture. Uh, take a break, step back, uh, look at the cost of each item, make sure that it makes sense. Also understanding how much the ingredients cost in each recipe will kind of give you more of a respect for those ingredients. Uh, be like, wow, I didn't realize asparagus was so expensive. Like one bunch costs this much. I didn't realize that. You kind of have a visual uh, representation of what the, the cost is. Uh, that'll help you kind of respect and wrap your mind around uh, where your food is going. So I have a recipe for pot roast. Uh, I picked something that I thought a lot of people could identify with. Uh, it also has a lot of different instances of different types of units of measure. It also uses an ingredient that you'll need to use yield percents on. If you don't know what yield percents are, check out my other video on it. The main ingredient in this recipe is chuck roast. The recipe requires four pounds of chuck roast. For buying the chuck roast by the case, the case weighs 85 pounds. That 85 pound case costs $394.40. So if we break that down, we take 394.4 divided by 85 that equals $4.64 a pound. Since our recipe calls for pounds, that's as far down as we need to go for units. So you take the 464 and times that by four pounds, and what you get is $18.56. But you had to clean the chuck roast, so you need to figure in the yield percent for that. Uh, the yield percent for chuck roast is 85%. So you take $18.56 and divide that by 0.85 and that'll give you $21.84. Our recipe uses $21.84 worth of chuck roast. Uh, the next item on the recipe is two whole onions. Now, when we're purchasing the onions, we're purchasing it by 10 pounds and that's $7.14. So let's find out the pound weight of the onions. You take the $7.14 and you divide that by 10. The money will always be on top. Whenever you're doing these equations, the money will always be on top. So you take what you paid for it and you divide it by the amount of pounds it is and that should give you a pound price. And then you take that pound price and you divide that by 16 because there's 16 ounces in a pound and that'll give you an ounce price. So $7.14 worth of onions divided by 10 will get you 72 cents per pound of onions. Now, when you're doing these equation, I would always round up. You don't wanna round down because you're trying to get back the cost of your ingredient price. So if you round down, you'll be losing money. You always round up. So $7.14 divided by 10 pounds equals 72 cents per pound. You divide 72 cents by 16 ounces and that equals five cents per ounce. 
Now this is where it gets a little tricky and the, the book of yields will really help you out here. It says here that a large onion weighs 13.7 ounces each. So if we take that 13.7 ounces and times that by five cents, that'll give us a number. And then we times that number by two and what we get is $1.24. Our recipe has two onions and those two onions cost us $1.24. Next on the recipe is 10 cloves of garlic. We're buying garlic in five pound bags. That five pound bag costs $15.62. So if you take $15.62 divided by five pounds, that equals $3.13 per pound. You divide that by 16 and that equals 19 cents per ounce. The boogie yield says that one clove of garlic weighs 0.18 ounces. And since our recipe calls for 10 cloves of garlic, that's a grand total of 1.8 ounces of garlic cloves. So we take that 1.8 ounces of garlic cloves and times that by 19, and that gets us 35 cents. There's 35 cents of garlic in our recipe. Next on the recipe is one pound of Yukon Gold potatoes. We're buying the Yukon Gold potatoes by an eight pound case. That equals $4.68. You take that $4.68 divided by eight, that gives us 59 cents a pound. And we only need one pound of Yukon Golds for the recipe. So that is 59 cents for the Yukon Gold potatoes in our recipe. Next up, we have five carrots. We're buying our carrots by the five pound case. That equals $3.28. You take the $3.28 divided by five, that equals 66 cents per pound. Okay, so the book of yield says that each carrot weighs 5.5 ounces and there's five of those. So that's 27.5 ounces total. So we're gonna take that 27.5 ounces of carrots that we have, divide that by 16. That'll give us a pound weight of what we have. 27.5 ounces is the same thing as 1.72 pounds. So we take that 1.72 pounds and we times that by 66 cents and that'll get us $1.14 of carrots for that recipe. Uh, next up is two celery stalks. Uh, we're buying the celery by one bunch. That's $1.64. Consulting the book of yields, it states that there are 10 stalks of celery per bunch. The book of yields is basically getting these numbers based on a lot of testing. They'll do a lot of every ingredient and then this is what the averages are. So all these numbers that are in the book of yields are just averages of a lot of years of like kitchen work. So they took 100 heads of celery and found out how many stalks are in each of them and then the average was basically 10 stocks. There might be 12 here, there'd be maybe nine over here, but it averages out to 10 stocks per celery. And that's how the book of yields works. So 10 stocks of celery per bunch, take $1.64, divided by 10 stalks equals 17 cents per stalk. Our recipe calls for two stalks. So we take that 17 cents times two and that equals 33 cents. There is 33 cents of celery in our recipe. Uh, next item is red wine vinegar. Uh, recipe calls for a quarter cup. We bought our red wine vinegar in one gallon. That was $18.99. You take that $18.99 divided by 128. That'll tell us the fluid ounces. There's 128 fluid ounces in one gallon. Uh, so that equals 15 cents per fluid ounce. And since there's two fluid ounces in a quarter cup, we're gonna take that 15 cents and times it by two, and that equals 30 cents. There is 30 cents worth of red wine vinegar in our recipe. Next up, we have Dijon mustard. Recipe calls for two tablespoons. Uh, we bought our jar of mustard. It was an eight ounce jar. Uh, that's eight ounces by weight, not to be confused with fluid ounce. So that eight ounce jar costs $3.29. Uh, we divide that by eight and we get 42 cents per ounce. The book of yields states that one tablespoon of Dijon mustard weighs 0.53 ounces and you times that by two. So two tablespoons weighs 1.06 ounces. 1.06 times our 42 cents equals 45 cents. We have 45 cents worth of Dijon in our recipe. Next up, we have brown sugar. Recipe calls for one tablespoon. We bought a case of brown sugar, 12 two pound bags, and equals $19.68. So if we divide the $19.68 by 12, we get $1.64 per two pound bag. You divide that by two to get the pound weight. That is 82 cents per pound. You divide that by 16 to get the ounce. 
that equals six cents per ounce of brown sugar. Now that we got the cost, we need to break it down. Uh, so the book of yield states that one cup of packed brown sugar is 7.75 ounces per cup. You divide that by 16, because coincidentally there's 16 tablespoons per cup. Funny how that works out. So you divide that by 16 and then, so one tablespoon weighs 0.49 ounces. So if you take that six cents per ounce and you times it by 49 cents, then you get three cents. We have three cents of brown sugar in this recipe. So next up we have dry thyme. The recipe calls for one tablespoon. We bought our thyme in a 16 ounce container that costs $10.25. You take $10.25 divided by 16 because there's 16 ounces in a pound and you get 65 cents an ounce. The Book of Yield states that one tablespoon of dry thyme weighs 0.1 ounce. So if you take our 65 cents per ounce times 0.1, that equals seven cents. Seven cents of dry thyme in our recipe. Uh, next up, the recipe calls for beef base. Recipe calls for two tablespoons. We bought our beef base in a case. There's six one pound containers in that case. Cost $72.49. Take that $72.49 divided by six, and that equals $12.09 per pound. You take that $12.09 per pound, divide that by 16, and that is 75 cents per ounce. I didn't find this in the book of yields. I had to look online. If you can't find something in the book of yields, you can always Google it. Uh, do a little searching, you'll find your answer. Or you could just weigh it out yourself. Go get beef base, get a tablespoon, weigh it out yourself. I find it a lot easier just to look online because a lot of people have already done this for you. So one tablespoon of beef base weighs 0.85 ounces. You take our 75 cents per ounce cost times 0.85 ounces per tablespoon, and that equals 64 cents per tablespoon. You're gonna times that by two, because we have two tablespoons in the recipe, and that's $1.27. $1.27 of beef base in our recipe. So next up we have kosher salt, one tablespoon for our recipe. We bought our salt in a case. There's 12 three pound boxes in that case. It costs $76.49. You divide that $76.49 by 12, and that means each three pound box costs $6.37. Uh, you divide that by three to figure out what the pound cost is, and that's $2.13 per pound. You take that two dollars and 13 cents per pound and divide that by 16 and that is 14 cents per ounce. The book of yield says that one tablespoon of kosher salt weighs 0.58 ounces. So we're going to take that 14 cents per ounce and we're going to times that by 0.58 ounces and that equals nine cents. There's nine cents worth of kosher salt in our recipe. And then the last ingredient is water. Uh, water is generally free, so you don't need to cost that out. You can see there's a lot of math involved in this and uh, that can probably cause you to have a headache, but it's worth noting that if you are taking the time to do this math, you can always take like say, you know, you now know how much one tablespoon of time costs you. It's worth writing that down so that next time you don't have to do the math and you can just look at a piece of paper and it'll be like, oh, okay. one tablespoon of dry thyme costs this much. It's also really good for inventory purposes. If you break down, say, a box of kosher salt, you know a box of kosher salt costs $6.37, then when you're doing your inventory, you can count it by the box and then have that number there already. Looking at this recipe, there's a couple items on here that are super cheap. The more you cost out recipes, the more you'll realize like certain ingredients are super cheap, like salt, dry thyme, garlic. Uh, sometimes I'll cheat and I will just kind of guesstimate. Sometimes I'll just tack on an extra 50 cents or an extra dollar and I won't cost those items out just because it takes longer to cost that out than I really have time to do. Being a chef, you're super busy. Sometimes you're coming up with these numbers on the fly. The total cost of our recipe is $27.70. And you'll look at the chuck roast and the chuck roast costs $21.84. So the majority of the recipe is the meat. That's generally how a lot of recipes will work. But looking at this, you can kind of get a breakdown of, you know, like what's more expensive like the meat's expensive the onions are second most expensive the carrots are the third most expensive but the meat by far is the most expensive item now you have a lot of items on here that don't cost very much at all like the brown sugar costs three cents and the dry thyme costs seven cents 
salt costs nine cents. Um, even the garlic, 35 cents is not very much. After doing these recipes for a while, you kind of get a feeling for what costs more. You know that the majority of the recipe is gonna be the meat. You just cost out the meat and a couple of the more expensive items and then throwaway items like salt and dry thyme and garlic. You can just tack on an extra 50 cents or a dollar and it won't really make that much difference in the, the grand scheme of how much the recipe costs, but it'll, it'll save you a lot of time. It'll save you a lot of headache. So it's nice to know the exact cost. Like I know exactly how much it costs, but there's times when you don't want to do all the math. You just can tack on like 50 cents or a dollar, make your life a little easier. So if you take that $27 and 70 cents and this recipe yields 10 servings, uh, that means that our recipe is $2.77 per serving. That gives you a good foundation on where to figure out what your selling price will be. Uh, that's a topic for another video. Now, if you're writing recipes, um, sometimes it's easier just to break down your recipes in the unit that you purchase those items in. Like say you bought salt, you buy salt by the pound, you might as well have like at least ounces in the recipe instead of tablespoons because then you have to break out the book of yields and it becomes a whole process. But if you take like say, you buy carrots by the pound. If you can make your recipe have the carrots by the weight, for one, weight's more accurate than volume measures. Instead of putting five carrots in the recipe, we figured out that the five carrots was 1.72 pounds. You just put that in the recipe instead and when you're writing the recipe and then if you ever had to go back and figure it out, you're taking a lot of variables out of the equation already. That would make your costing a lot easier. Weighing carrots versus like having cups of carrots even having cups of carrots is a little bit more accurate than like having five carrots. Like not all carrots are the same size. So like say like one person might pick five small carrots, one person might pick five large carrots. If you have it by weight, then you're gonna have an exact amount. Or even if you have it in like cups, that's gonna be more accurate than five. Also, as you saw, yield percent plays a big factor um, when it comes to the more expensive item. Like if you're cleaning an item, then you're making the cost more per unit because you're removing it's part of the unit. So you need to get that cost back by using a yield percent. I have a whole other video on that. It is very important to know what yield percents are and whether you need to use a yield percent or not. So go check out that video. But yield percents also play a bigger factor if you're using straight weights. Since the recipe called for five carrots and two onions, I mean, you have waste with those. You are peeling the onion and you're taking off the core. Um, with the carrots, you're peeling the carrots and you're taking off the core. The way the recipe was written, it just asks for five carrots and two onions. But if say, you're using cups or weight, um, the core and the peels are not gonna be part of that weight. You're gonna wanna clean ingredients for that. Um, and that's where yield percents will factor more into it. I find it easier to plug in a yield percent number into the equation than to have to look at the book of yields every time to figure out how much each ingredient weighs per each or per cup. If you catch my drift, it's easier just to plug in a yield percent formula if you're using straight weights in your recipes instead of volumes or eaches. But breaking down the recipe into the actual units of measure that you purchase it by will make that process a lot easier. So now that we know the cost per recipe and the cost per serving, we can find out a selling price for said item. But that's a topic for a whole nother video. I would not suggest costing out a lot of recipes at once. Maybe as you write the recipe or do a recipe per day, doing a lot of recipes all at once will be mind numbing. Well, I hope I helped you figure out how to cost out some recipes. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Happy costing and please like and subscribe.